What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. Now I know what you all are thinking, why am I posting a video when E3 stuff is going on? Well, because we're I'm I'm in between things. I didn't go into work today because I uh, here in Alabama it's storming a lot right now, so they said I don't have to come into work because it's completely dead. So I figured I'd use the time to do some legal research, post a video for you guys. And today's battle is actually a singles battle that I had against Subi. I actually will post his Twitter link in the description. He is a fantastic battler. I really like his style because not only does he use things in inventive ways, but the, the way he uses new ideas and strategies are quite viable. He is extremely fun to battle against, and he's also very good to bounce ideas against. So be sure to go challenge him on Twitter if uh, you guys use Twitter. Now, in this match right here, I was actually just testing out Scarf Metagross uh, in lieu of Alpha, Sapphire, and Omega Ruby. I can see Metagross probably getting a uh, Mega Evolution just if for no other reason than Steven Stone is investigating Mega Evolution. So I wanted to try out Scarf Metagross. Now I also have an Agility Metagross. Scarf Metagross could also of course use Assault Vest. So it, it opens up a few options there. Now my opponent does start off with Pidgeot. I start off with Assault Vest Gudra. I didn't want to over predict first turn. I just went straight for the Ice Beam. He does bring in Lapras, which seeing the damage that Lapras takes from the Ice Beam doesn't tell me anything, but it is nice to know that he has leftovers. I decided to stay in and go for Power Whip, just to see how much it does. Um, and he has Freeze Dry, which is good, because now I know, okay, I, I know uh, it's a little bit weaker than Ice Beam, so I can manage that. Since I know that he's probably going to be going for another Freeze Dry, I decided to bring in my Scarf Metagross now. But he decides to go for rest. I don't see a Chesto Berry, so I was thinking maybe a Sleep Talk set. Uh, I figured that Sand Slash was quite imminent on the Switch End, so I decided to go for Hammer Arm instead of Meteor Mash. Um, just in case he decided to go into something else random. Uh, also, I was afraid of of missing there. And I, don't, I, I might switch out Hammer Arm, actually. Uh, it's just good for coverage right now. Now, I bring in... My Gorgeist right here, of course, Gorgeist is a ghost grass type, which of course saps his giraffe rig being a normal psychic type, walls completely. Now I knew that that switch was very imminent, and I decided to go for the trick because giraffe rig often runs support options, as you'll see he actually has baton pass on his, and uh, I can't touch it with my Gorgeist, so giving it my choice ban is definitely the best thing to do for now. It can't be too annoying for the rest of my team. And now looking at my team, I did bring a bunch of random things just like he did. And we both realized, oh, he doesn't really have anything for Mega Ampharos. And so I go for Confuse right here just because this is a, kind of an Anorier set. It has really high HP and special defense and some special attack. But Confuse Ray was my best bet for maybe getting a free switch in here. <laughs> I was hoping he'd go for the Dragon Pulse. But unfortunately, not only does he break through the Confusion on this turn, but he actually also goes for Thunderbolt. So he may have been predicting my switch out, or he just didn't expect me to have Volt Absorb, I guess. Not really sure right there. Uh, unfortunately, Spike goes down without doing anything. I'm going to go out into my offensive Regirock right here. I can take one Thunderbolt just to set up my Stealth Rocks. I was hoping he'd hit himself in Confusion, and I could hit him back with an Earthquake or a Drain Punch to recover some of that HP. But alas, he uh, paralyzes me, so I didn't want to take the risk. I go out into Eric, again hoping for Confusion Hacks. I actually have um, Water Absorb on this particular Lantern, so I'm not able to take those hits from that right there either. Just went for Hydro Pump because that's really the best damaging option that I have, and I can't paralyze him because he's an electric type. So he is able to take out two of my Pokemon with his Ampharos. I'm hoping at this point I can take him out with a Choice Scarf Earthquake. I know Giraffe Rig is coming in, 
Uh, but since it's banded, I'm not really worried about it. I can probably 2 a KO with Earthquake. But it's not good to be locked in on Earthquake because he does have Pidgeot. And he is going to Baton Pass out at this point now that he sees what I'm locked into, because I'm sure by this point he's figured out what type of Metagross I have. And he actually does end up going back out into Pidgeot. Warbeak is a pretty cool nickname, by the way. Just a small aside there. Now I'm going to go back out into Regirock, just expecting maybe a Brave Board, maybe a U-Turn. I know I can take either one. He ends up going for the U-Turn. Uh, he goes out into Sand Slash, which means that the Rapid Spin is definitely coming. I could just leave Regirock in here for Death Fodder. Even if he wants to go for Earthquake, Gorgeist isn't going to mind either of those very much. Uh, but the main thing is to make sure my rocks stay up, because now that Regirock is paralyzed with so little HP, it's going to be hard to set them back up if he spins my rocks away. So blocking his spin is very important, and uh, I'm going to be able to hopefully wear down the Giraffe Rig with Stealth Rocks as it switches in, but it still has enough HP for one more switch in. I just went for Seed Bomb in case he tried to stay in and knock off or anything weird like that. And I give the Giraffe Rig an attack boost. I knew it had Sap Sipper, but I had to keep him honest at the same um, degree. And I, again, with Giraffe Rig being locked in on Baton Pass, basically, I'm not really that worried about it. Um, this time he Baton passes out in a Warbeak, which he does technically give it an attack boost because of the Sap Sipper. Uh, he won't really get a chance to use it because Regirock has such low HP at this point. Anything will basically take it out. Um, but at the same token, you know, you might as well give it to something useful. Uh, knowing that he does have the Sap Sipper boost, though, I'm not going to mess around with Pidgeot. It actually does have pretty decent attack even before the attack boost, and I'm going to threaten it out with the Meteor Mash, uh, just because I can. Uh, he does take this opportunity to Death Fodder his Giraffe Rig, and I decided to lock myself into Zen Headbutt just in case he brings in his Ampharos. That works out pretty well because now he brings it in, I know I'm faster just because Mega Ampharos is pretty slow anyway. I figured I could take one Thunderbolt from this thing, and I'm able to do so, and I'm able to hit both of the Zen Headbutts and finish him off. So that is a huge sigh of relief. He goes back on in the Sand Slash. Once again, no reason to try to overpredict here. Gorgeist basically walls this thing unless it has Knock Off from uh, last generation. And Rapid Spin is going to fail because I'm a Ghost type. Now, since Giraffe Rig is gone, I'm now free to spam uh, multiple attacks. I have Phantom Force, Shadow Sneak, Trick, and Seed Bomb on this particular Gorgeist because it's my super size one, so it's more offensively orientated. He misses Stone Edge, but just based on how much this second Stone Edge does, I do have max HP, so it really didn't matter that he missed it. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it mattered in the sense that, okay, he would have done a little bit more damage, but I don't I just don't think he wanted to switch anything in on my Gorgeist attacks. Now, Tiflosion comes in. I was really worried about Eruption Tiflosion. Fortunately, Stealth Rocks helped me out a little bit there, and that's exactly what he ends up going for. Uh, and I really just wanted to knock some HP off of that thing. I did not see Lapras switching in right here, otherwise I definitely would have gone for Power Whip instead of Dragon Pulse. But I figured he might just go for a, maybe a Power Herb uh, type move, or maybe even have a Hidden Power Ice. Who knows? Um, I'm not quite able to finish off the Lapras with a Power Whip. He hangs on with just a little bit of HP. He uses Sleep Talk, so I was correct in my prediction about a Sleep Talk set. But unfortunately for him, he gets Surf and not Freeze Dry. I guess that is a little bit of chip damage as opposed to getting Rest again. But um, Freeze Dry, since of course that hits Water types alongside Surf, actually has really good coverage. So that's an interesting set. Now, he brings in Pidgeot here. I did not want to switch out and give him switching advantage. I thought he was going to actually go for a U-turn, so I stayed in. Went for the Ice Beam, but since Lapras is now KO'd, Gudra has actually done a good part of its work. Now here, I did, knew he was, I did not think he was going to go for Brave Bird. I kind of just called his bluff right there, uh, and I, I just kind of was like, yep, you're going to switch out. Now he switches out into Tiflosion, uh, and here is where he remembers that I have Shadow Sneak. Uh, so he really should have stayed in and gone for the Brave Bird right there. Granted, I still had Choice Scarf, Metagross, and the Wings, so if he had gone for Brave Bird, he would have had so much uh, recoil damage on himself that uh, he would have had a little bit of trouble dealing with my Metagross. And then, of course, the Flozen switching back, back in would have had to deal with 
Metagross at a low amount of HP from Stealth Rocks. Um, since he went for a Roost, he did lose his flying typing, and I was able to finish him off with a Seed Bomb. And I hope you all enjoyed this battle. It was nice to go back to singles for a little bit. Um, my next couple of uploads are definitely going to be the last few matches that I had from the ICL. And uh, go back and look at a few more matches that I had from the Friendly, just to take a look at that metagame and what was being used. Um, I think the last couple of matches that I used from the ICL utilize Escavalier, and I actually get to use Trick Room in a couple of those battles, so, you know, that's the thing. Uh, be sure to tell me what you guys are interested from E3. I, myself, was pretty hyped for almost all of the conferences that we've seen so far. Naturally, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm on a bit of a blackout for Omega, Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire. But I did see the little mini trailer that they posted. I, I think I blinked when Mega Sceptile was on the screen. I didn't actually see it. I did get to see Mega Swampert. Um, that That's a thing. So definitely go check out that content. Of course, very excited for X, Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, Bayonetta 2, and Yoshi's Wooly World alongside Destiny on the PlayStation 4. It would be really nice to get that white PlayStation 4 bundle with Destiny in it. Um, a couple of other notable mentions are going to be the uh, Bloodborne that was announced yesterday. We also got to see a little bit more footage for Sunset Overdrive on the Xbox One, which of course is being done by Insomniac, makers of Ratchet and Clank. Uh, and of course, definitely interested in a lot of those indie games that we saw flashed up on the screen very briefly. Uh, I was a really big fan of Limbo, so it is great to see the sequel inside um, being announced as well. So be sure to leave some of the things you're excited about in E3 down in the comments. I hope you all enjoyed this battle video. Go check out Subi on Twitter. His handle will be in the description. And have a fantastic day, everyone. Bye-bye now.